CNBC's latest roadback barometer is taking a look at the outlook for the nation's supply chain problems. Steve Leisman is here. He's got more on that. And uh, this is the big issue everybody's thinking about right now, Steve. Yeah, big for inflation, Becky. And resolving the supply chain problem, critical to the growth outlook and bringing down inflation. By now, the Fed had thought they'd be on the mend, but this supply chain edition of the roadback barometer shows bottlenecks in some cases getting worse. According to data from IHS Market, the gauge of on-time arrival of cargo ships, they call that ocean reliability, heh, not so reliable, down at 10 percent. It's normally 70 <clears> percent. <throat> the cost for short-haul trucking now averages $3 a mile. That's up nearly a dollar. And the key shortage of chassis could be the linchpin of the whole mess here, running at 8.8 .8 days where they sit idle. Let's go back through these. On-time cargo ship arrival showed a brief improvement in the spring. Now it's trending worse. It's about as bad as it was back in January. System cannot seem to catch up. The U.S. $3 per mile trucking average, well, that masks much higher rates on specific routes. For example, L.A. to Phoenix, up to nearly four fifty dollars a mile from around two fifty. dollars L.A. to Chicago, up 13% week to week. Finally, these simple pieces of equipment, the chassis. Moves to containers. There is short supply because users are hoarding them. The shortage comes in part from driver shortages and a lack of warehouse space to unload the containers. The result, they sit idle. So containers sit idle. The system backs up further. Mark Zaccone from the IHS tells me most container lines don't see any relief until the end of 22 or early 2023. Backups in one part of the system create backups in the other. So relief and pricing pressure from supply chain troubles could be further down the road, and that could help explain why Fed officials more and more see high inflation rates remaining well into next year, guys. Becky? You know, Steve, this is a really interesting point. I've been trying to dig into it, too, to try and find where the choke points are and why. And you've got choke points at the, right. at the ports. You've got cho choke points at the railroads, like in, in areas where a lot of lines come together. And it's not just the chassis, it's the labor. And it's also the idea, you know, this wasn't just a COVID situation. We thought it was COVID because they shut things down and then they're shipping things. You have very flush consumers who are buying more than ever. You've got a very difficult time finding labors. And then you've got these chassis, too. I mean, I think that this just shows how fragile the whole system was before all of this started. I think you make an excellent point. I think if you had a system, and I don't know if it was exactly like this, but they had wrung a lot of the excess out of it. You know, like private equity comes in and they, they, they look at, at businesses and they take some of the, the, the excess out of it. So you have a system that's running pretty efficiently. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, something like this comes along. And what do you need? Excess capacity to catch up. And you can't do it. And just real quickly on this issue of why don't they build more chassis? Well, there's all these tariffs in place. Tariffs began in the Trump administration. They have now been increased in the uh, uh, Biden administration. So you have this big tariff issue, you can't import them. And I think U.S. domestic uh, 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 suppliers are struggling to, to catch up here. Yeah.